Hi everyone, this is Cody, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make an affordable subwoofer amp uh, out of a um, just Logitech speaker system. Uh, this will work with a few, few different models uh, that will power a passive subwoofer. Okay, so here I have just a, a Logitech, um, what is it, X240. Um, I've showed this before in a different video. It's honestly not that good. Um, but we're going to turn it, basically utilize the amp and the um, low pass filter that's built into it to power a much better subwoofer. Now this doesn't have a lot of power, um, so you're not going to be able to power too much with it. But it'll get you through if you're in a pinch, and it actually sounds pretty good with a much better subwoofer. So the first thing you want to do, oh and this will also work on higher end Logitech systems basically the same way. Uh, so yeah, you can do it with that as well. That's what I do for my setup, but this is just a demonstration. Uh, so you want to take off the subwoofer. Be careful doing this if you want to save this subwoofer, not to uh, put a cut in it, because I did that before. <laughs> okay, so now you want to lift it out. Um, now what you're going to have, you're going to, it's not going to look quite like this, you're going to have a red and a black cable. Now you want to chop them. Uh, I'd leave a little bit of room just so you can reuse the cable that's on this if you need to. But chop them there. Um, now I already have connectors on mine, so I'm just going to disconnect it. So you'd chop the subwoofer off there. So this is actually how it works, there's a magnet and then it goes pushes uh, air out and in and it makes a sound this is a really small one but it's kind of cool to see the workings of it and how it actually works so I put quick connectors on it just so I can connect it back up now on this side um, you're gonna have these two cables now the amplifier is actually in there you could in theory take that out and just stick it in a different system uh, but I kind of like the contained box, it makes it a little bit nicer. So I put these, you could just solder this on to the passive subwoofer, but I put these two quick connectors here. So now this will connect up to a, um, a subwoofer, a passive subwoofer. So what I would recommend doing, so you have, uh, so you would have your subwoofer with quick connectors or soldered on connected up to here. Uh, so then you just have wires hanging out so what I would do then is basically put the subwoofer back on and kind of clamp the wires down it makes it kind of just a nice clean box and then it's not going to get tugged on and damage anything since this is kind of a complete unit I'm just going to connect these back up um, So that can go like that, this can go in, and then it can be put back together. Okay, so this is my personal setup. I have a Sony subwoofer. Uh, this subwoofer is actually really, really good. Uh, I like it a lot. I'll put the model number on screen. It actually comes out of a kit, but I got it used. Uh, and with this setup, it works really well. Uh, so going up, we have a Logitech. Again, I'll put the model on the screen. Um, and it, you can't actually detach this speaker without, uh, is it has the controls on it without, uh, making the whole system not work. So I basically wired it up so the speaker doesn't, uh, get used. I'll show you how I did that. Okay, so on the back of this unit, I have the controller hooked up, uh, which goes to this controller. Um, and then from my Sony receiver, I have the subwoofer port. Just a, one of a cable you can use just a standard RCA cable. It doesn't have to be a special subwoofer cable. That's all it is. Just use one side of it. Keep the color the same on each side so you know which one's which. Now I you plugged it into the um, the white side, uh, so that's going to be your left channel. And what that's going to do is it's not going to play through this. Is this is the right channel? Now the left channel is not actually plugged in right now. Uh, so that's going to be great so you won't have any static noise or anything going through this. 
Now what I do with the controls on this, I turn this the volume all the way up to get the most power and so it's uh, whenever you turn it on you just always turn it all the way on and then when it's all the way up I adjust the bass level to the correct amount of bass for the room and the situation and what you feel like. Uh, so basically this is going to be you set this once pretty much and tune it tune it to your liking and then this is your on off switch. You turn it on and off. It's actually not as nice as the other unit that I showed you because it just has an on off switch and a separate bass uh, level and volume. So anyway so that's how I deal with that. I'm actually going to turn it off right now. So then on the bottom of this cables are a little bit tangled. Oh, there we go. So here is the subwoofer. This subwoofer is actually quite a bit better than the other one. Um, it doesn't sound quite... there's not as many uh, tones and stuff on this as the other unit, but the subwoofer is pretty good, so it's definitely worth keeping. Uh, again, I'm just using it as kind of a cover. I do plan to do something with it in the future. Uh, maybe make a, a separate subwoofer box, so that would be cool. So then this runs to my Sony subwoofer, this cable, and I'll actually just take this off for you. Okay, so now that's off, so I can lift. The subwoofer is actually quite heavy. Um, so as you can see, wires are just chopped. Now this is a much bigger one. Um, as you can see, it's quite nice. Um, so I'll set that aside. You definitely don't want to break that one. And then, as you can see, I just have the same sort of setup going to the... Uh, I also have another video showing on how to check the polarity of a subwoofer. It's a Sony subwoofer. There was no way to tell. Uh, you just take a, a battery, like a AA, and put it on the sides. And I have another video on it. I'll link to it in the description. Uh, but anyway, so I, it's connected up like that. And then this just fits on. I try to make the cables to make sure they aren't going to touch anything. Um, this fits on over top and that's it. Okay so that's pretty much it. Uh, this setup works pretty good. Um, depending on the amplifier you have it's going to depend on how much power you're going to be able to get out of your subwoofer. Um, keep in mind this is like a 165 watt subwoofer and this I think is, does 40 watts max. So this turned up all the way is going to produce 40 watts to power this but it um, it goes way loud I mean there's no need to have that power and this doesn't seem to overheat or anything you know in the long run it may make it not last as long but um, it's worked fine for me uh, and I've been doing it for quite a while the thing doesn't get hot at all it uh, it really does work good um, and I don't think this thing needs any more power than it has um, so yeah, it, it does. It it really does sound amazing uh, with it. It's a lot of uh, boom. <laughs> you will actually have to turn down the bass uh, if you run this thing on full power. Uh, there's going to be way too much bass. You won't be able to hear the music. Um, so would I recommend doing this uh, if you're not trying to spend a bunch of money? I would totally recommend it. I actually have another just Sony complete subwoofer with the amp and everything, and it doesn't sound anywhere near as good as this. Um, not as loud, not as clear, it's kind of muddy, it's just, this is a really nice setup, I think. Uh, so, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you all in the next video.